Hello everyone, and welcome back to Salasta, Crown of the Magister. Now that I know how the mechanics are going to work for the large part compared to the 5th edition rule set and the ancestries, classes and backgrounds, I went ahead and I built a party. So here we have our party of four. I'll give you the basic rundown. Gothic Lorduk is a human wizard. I decided rather than rolling for stats and ending up with probably very broken characters, I went with point by and did a fairly standard uh, deployment of points. And so we have all of our basic gear here as a wizard, high intelligence, high constitution, reasonable decks, dumped most everything else. We have intelligence and wisdom saving throw proficiencies as all wizards do and a couple of proficiencies largely on and largely in our intelligence skills as well as insights we can use the manaclon ro rosary and the scroll kits and we have our standard weapons armor and a few extra languages for spells we know the dying dancing lights not dying lights that's a video game the Dancing Lights cantrip because we do not have any dark vision, Firebolt for a spell attack for damage, and Poison Spray for a save for damage, then Burning Hands, Magic Missile, Sleep, Shield, Identify which can be cast as a Ritual, and Thunder Wave. We of course have our two first level spell slots, and that is us for the Wizard. We have Faith Familiars, the Island Halfling Lowlife Rogue. So again, 16 in Dex for the main stats. 14 Con, 14 Intelligence, 13 Wisdom. All of your standard gear. And then for proficiencies, we have Dexterity and Intelligence saving throws as a Rogue. We have Sleight of Hand proficiency, Investigation, Perception, some Languages, uh, some Charisma skills rather. And we have expertise in stealth and thieves tools so denoted by the double double helmet flags we add our proficiency bonus to those twice we also have simple weapons longsword rapier short sword and light armor as well as a couple of languages next let's check out kite flyer he is our half elf cell sword paladin and so he managed to get away with 16 strength, 16 con, and 16 charisma, dumping dex and intelligence. Then for the proficiencies here, we have wisdom and charisma saves. Unfortunately, very low on the dex save, which could harm us in the long term. Proficiency, athletics, insight and medicine, and several of these charisma skills. He's probably going to be the voice of the party. Smith's tools... And then our armor proficiencies and a few languages. And then last but not least, Pastel My Past, the Hill Dwarf, Cleric of Oblivion, Spy. If we inspect her, we can see that, again, all the usual gear. Proficiencies, we have Wisdom and Charisma saving throws. High Con and Wisdom, because that's kind of what you need as a cleric with reasonable strength for weapon attacks as well. Proficiency in Stealth, Medicine, Deception, a couple of others. But what's really interesting here is that we also have the Spies Codebook because of our spy background. So we're going to be able to see various codes and ciphers throughout the campaign. And with that being the party, there's nothing more to do than get started. So let's get a new adventure going. Uh, it's going to be the Crown of the Magister campaign on authentic difficulty mode and let's select those personal heroes we've got gothic lorduk select faith familiaris kite flyer and pastel my past and then we can see where this campaign is going to take us i'm happy with that brightness that is my regular reminder to make sure that flux is turned off so that everything doesn't get really dim after sunset. Before the cataclysm, 
There were no gods on Celasta. No humans either. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it, and twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there, in search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. It is the year 1024 after the Cataclysm. New states have arisen around the Badlands and crave its treasures. A newly discovered road offers a safer route into the ruined heart of the Empire from the Principality of Mazgarth, upsetting the balance of power. The Legacy Council is formed to ensure that the knowledge is shared. It issues a call for agents to explore the Badlands in its name. Adventurers flock to Ker Kaiflin, the Principality's capital and the home of the Council. Four strangers meet in the Grave Keep's cask, close to the council chambers. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. Is this the place for the Legacy Council job? Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit, relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Caron doesn't show up soon, I may go looking for him. Another round, barkeeper. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt from the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. And here we begin our first of four tutorials. So we need to escape the bandit's prison. The game is going to tell us all about camera controls and things. I did this once already, just to kind of get a lay of the land and what was going on. And so it's fairly straightforward stuff. I will spare you all of the tutorial tooltips. We can move under this gap here because we are able to crawl. And what we're looking for is simply a way out of this place. If we press Alt on the keyboard, we can see highlighted objects that we are able to interact with, like this pot. And we find a torch, which we can make use of. Otherwise, we will hope the game hasn't crashed. Might have crashed a little bit. All right, we're back collecting that torch. And then we can carry on working on our escape. So we can see that this is highlighted and that we are able to move it in order to give ourselves an escape route. A little more crawling. And then climbing around in 3D space. There is a chest over there. Let's see if we can't reach it. Uh, I've just skipped over the tutorial about how to jump. 
and I regret it entirely. No path to destination. I understand that. Right, we'll find another way, shall we? One thing that I really am appreciating from this compared to something like Baldur's Gate 3 is kind of the darkness surrounding the areas that we haven't uncovered yet. So even though we can't see this space, we have had it lit to us in the map. But what's beyond this wall is a complete mystery to us because we've not yet uncovered that area. And so that fog of war really does add to the experience of the unknown coming. Now we can get this chest. What do we get? A potion of healing. Always very welcome. Right, back through to the other side. And these unknown creatures are hanging out just near this collapsed wall, eh? Yep, that's gone very well. Another chest. Always be looting. ABL. Always be looting. Oh, that's all of our equipment, which is great. Plus some rations and some extra arrows. Very happy to have that. And how are we escaping? Through this cell door, it seems. Right. Nice move. There's one tutorial. Glad you're no worse for wear. Perhaps someone else can tell a story since it looks like we might be here a while. Have another rail. It's not like you have anywhere better to be. I have a tale to tell as well. I too was attacked, but I put an end to my enemies with blood and pain. So what are you waiting for? Spit it out, why don't you? Alright, tutorial number two. Combat. Cross the bridge to escape the wolves. Moving past further requires dashing, so we can move six units, as depicted by our attributes. And then in order to dash, we have dash here, we can move another six. And then that is our turn. They're going to chase us down, which is to be expected, really. So to attack, we just have to pick our weapon and then select our target. Or we can use something like a shove. And we can shove to push away this one. And they go right off the cliff. Then we are out of actions, so we end turn. Clicking dodge as our main action lets us have all enemies have to try and attack us at disadvantage. So it's this one here. Proceed. So we are now dodging. Uh, we're going to take some opportunity attacks, but we might as well try and get further down the bridge. And again, that's our turn. not going too well for them so we can now shove again and we will keep moving there's an attack and a miss and let's just try a standard attack here so it's 1d6 plus 3 to melee attack with a javelin 18 plus 5 will hit, and 3 plus 3 damage gets us to where we need to be. Oh, hello. Even more. So, we can disengage. And that's going to be a full action.
By disengaging, they are unable to take an opportunity attack against us. We collapse the bridge, and we are on our way. What a bunch of namby pambies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. Shut your go, or I'll shut it for you. The Badlands are thick with them, shape-shifting bastards. Go easy on him. He's just a harmless old drunk. Probably saw lizard folk or dragonborn or something. You think I don't know the difference? All those spines on their backs, those jaws. You've never seen anything like it. Not lizard folk, not troglodyte, not dragonborn. I'm telling you. No one believes in Sorax anymore. Except the Church of Einar, of course. There's a Sorak under every bed if you believe them. Easy now. Don't mock people for their faith. Read them books. Soraks are masters of deception, infiltration. Anyone here could be a Sorak. You'd never know. Oh, come on. Huh, <laughs> you'll see. So, anyway. Soraks might be legend, but orcs are quite real, and not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. Bullshit. I traveled here from the east and left the main highway, hoping to save time by traversing the hills. The views were magnificent, but I should have kept my eye on the path because it gave way beneath my feet, plunging me into a Stygian darkness. Ow. All right. It's going to leave a mark. With two tutorials behind us, we'll take a break here, and then next time we will come back to do these remaining two tutorials before getting on with the adventure proper. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, you can find a playlist, list, a link to a playlist for this entire series down in the description. And again, thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.